I really enjoy puzzles. Crosswords, Sudokus, word puzzles, brain teasers, any kind of thing to make you like stretch your imagination and use your brain a little bit, but still keep it fun is right down my alley. But I specifically really enjoy the way an escape room or a puzzle room adds ciphers and clues and physical puzzles to decipher codes and find keys in new rooms and things like that. Some of the most fun escape rooms I've ever been to also incorporate a ton of smart technology and they don't just rely on old school keys and locks. And since I'm an engineer who likes hobby electronics and solving puzzles, I decided to try to make a programmable four digit code Arduino lockbox for myself. Now, if you enter that code correctly into my box, the automatic servo opens up and you can find a prize inside. If you're unfamiliar with the idea behind a four digit code or cipher, check out the one on screen now. There's a four digit code I hid in there and I tried not to make this one too tricky. If you think you got it, just keep watching. But if you want to take a minute and try to solve this one, I suggest you pause here while you figure it out. Last chance. Now let's take a look. So this code was one, two, four, one, which you find by realizing that there are four English numbers hidden in words that are homonyms or words that sound the same as those numbers. And if you enjoyed that puzzle, be sure to stick around because I'll have some more I thought up near the end of the video. Now let's check out how I made this thing. So to enter a four digit code and have four options, you obviously need four inputs. And you could get away with conventional push buttons, but something about capacitive touch sensors and the way they're actuated just by having a finger close to them without actually pressing anything in just seemed cooler to me. You'll want an Arduino Nano or a comparable microcontroller for the programming. Then I used 12 220 ohm resistors to go with my 12 LEDs. I had a bank of four red, four green, and four blue. Then the last key piece of hardware is the micro servo. If you're super interested in learning more about how I wired this up and tested it on a breadboard, be sure to check out that first video, which I'll leave a link to now and below in the description. Basically, I wrote a program that can receive a four digit code and that correlates to numbers from the four inputs. So if this is input one, two, three, and four, and you make a secret code three, two, four, and one, you're checking the sequence of the inputs and letting the user know how far along they are in their guess using the white or blue LEDs, then use the red and green LEDs for feedback about how correct or incorrect the answer was until they crack the puzzle. And the only thing the servo needs to do is open when they get it correct and close when they get it incorrect. I think there's a ton of possibilities to incorporate more complicated puzzling and riddling using this same format of inputs and outputs, but to keep it simple to showcase the puzzle box, I'm leaving it at that for now, but drop a comment letting me know how you think this box could be used as well. When I started making the project, I definitely thought the wiring and code would be the challenging part, and then throwing it into a box would be the easy part but man was I wrong. This is definitely heavily on me, but I just do not have much of a background in product design. When I made the leap from breadboard to a legit PCB, I had to spend some time learning how to design a PCB. I used a free software called KiCad, and I made a video about how to get started with that as well, and I showed the process step by step for making your first PCB using this exact board as the model. So I'll leave a link to that again, and go check that out if you're curious for more info. Once you have the design file, you still aren't fully there because actually manufacturing a printed circuit board is a crazy complicated process. But fortunately, there are companies out there that are super friendly to makers that provide this service, like the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. And there will be more about them in a little bit. Now, this was a huge leap from the project looking like a hobby build to really starting to have a legit feel to it. Now it was time to figure out the design for the final 3D printed box. I started with the top because I decided pretty early I wanted the PCB on display since it was my first custom PCB board and I wasn't gonna hide it. I basically went with a rectangular top plate with four pillars to mount the PCB to where its mounting holes lined up, which should give it enough room to not have its electric 
electrical components pressed to the lid. Next, I went with the three sides and the bottom of the box that didn't have to do any moving. That let me knock out four of the six sides of the box, with the only customization I really had to do being this notch where the hinge door would sit. And I had to design the side where the servo and the hinge and the door were all going to go. And this easily took me as long to model as all the other components combined. Fortunately, the hinge basic design came from a base project of someone who had cooked it up for an R2-D2 door flap, which was kind of fun, and I just had to adapt it to my design. Getting precise measurements for the servo and the hinge and the arms, it just felt like more art than science, to be honest, but once it came out good, it was so satisfying. Assembly was definitely tricky with so many wires packed inside the box, and I ended up putting the four capacitive touch sensors in a somewhat funky and kind of arbitrary location. The reason for that is that when I designed the 3D model, they would theoretically all fit in one way in a really nice pattern. But the reality is that getting all their wires attached and then attaching them to the wall was just too awkward, and I ended up having to stagger two on the sidewall and two on the back. Once I did get them into their somewhat uh, arbitrary locations, I used a drill to remove some of the surface on the outside where the buttons were to make it more obvious for whoever's solving the puzzle. All in all, I feel like this project taught me so much about actually designing a product and trying not to just make something that would be a useful YouTube tutorial, but an actual product and finished thing that you would wanna hang on with and play and show to your friends if you had any. Now that it's finally done, 3D printed and assembled, let's do a few more of these puzzles. While you're solving them, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Now each of these puzzles has a four digit code using one, two, three, and four hidden somewhere inside of it. Again, pause if you need a little more time and I'll try to throw a counter down letting you know when we're gonna reveal the answers. PCBWay is making it possible for makers and hobbyists to prototype builds using professional grade printed circuit boards that until recently would have been impossible for anyone other than a big business to even have access to. On top of that, they also offer 3D printing and CNC machining for metal parts as well. They also have very responsive customer support teams and engineers review your orders before you submit them. Designing a printed circuit board can be done on a variety of free designer softwares, and then exported to PCB design files, the most common format probably being a Gerber file. PCBWay lets you update your Gerber files directly to their ordering page and gets you a quote instantly, as well as letting you pick tons of customizations like text and solder mask color, which determines the color of your board. That's how I got these sweet black PCBs with white Lamaster Tech text on them. A massive thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and making this project possible. One thing this project has definitely taught me is that it's just insanely difficult to make anything. And just because it's not perfect doesn't mean I can't be proud of it. So I hope you guys find this project cool. I hope you enjoyed the format of this video. I really enjoyed making this video. And let me know in the comments what we should build next. Massive thank you to my Patreon supporters who make breaking into this kind of bigger hardware and product design uh, stuff possible. Thank you to everyone who leaves nice comments on the video, subscribes to the channel, and leaves likes. I appreciate the entire Lamaster Tech YouTube community. I had a ton of fun making this project. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was fun. And let me know what you want to see more of next time. As always, good luck with your projects. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.